Good morning and welcome to the Manila Times Newsroom. This is Tessa Mauricio Ariola, and I'm here today with two of our reporters to interview a very, very interesting lady. Our guest today started her career in the mental health service in 2007 as an assistant psychologist focusing on assessment and diagnosis. She is a licensed psychologist and psychometrician and has taught in a public university as assistant professor. She is also an academic officer at Careerline Courses Limited and an online education provider in Australia. She graduated from PUP in clinical psychology where she also acquired her master's. Please welcome to the Manila Times newsroom, Ms. Karen Ibanez. Hi, good morning. And I would like to introduce um, my fellow hosts for the day, of course, Red Mendoza, one of our senior reporters, and our newest reporter for the Health Beat, Bianca, Via Bianca Ramones. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We've decided to uh, include our young reporters to interview today because um, obviously we'll be talking about mental health, yes. Ms. Karen, and I think, you know, mental health is a topic that really kind of came into our consciousness when the millennials started working uh, mental health suddenly became such a topic is that yes. is that correct is that when it started to become uh, something that we are all concerned about um, uh, mental health actually is already in the consciousness of the millennials so to speak how however it got um, it got more uh, mainstream during the pandemic when everyone got in this abnormal situation mm -hmm. and we basically don't know what to do. So this is where the mental health um, started, uh, the discussion about mental health started to uh, go uh, in front more. more yes, because yes. I, I believe I came from a generation where usually you're just told to, you know, sort of grin and bear it, yes, you know, like uh, yes. if you go and work, if it becomes difficult, nothing is easy, yes. you know, and things like that. Uh, mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I think people obviously of a certain generation had to adjust to uh, um, this whole idea of mental health issues. So has it been, a, has it become a bigger problem, do you think, when it comes to the workforce? I mean, besides the pandemic. Yeah, definitely. Um, it's because we're working with uh, different generations already. So there's the uh, the boomer generation, the Gen X, the millennials, and Gen Z under one work uh, workforce or one work culture. Uh, we're in with uh, the Gen MZ. They, they have a mil uh, mental health as one of their priority or their non-negotiables when they join a company. However, the older generations, the uh, boomers and then the Gen X, wherein they thought uh, to be more gritty, you have to have gumption, you have to have perseverance despite of the stresses, despite of the issues, despite of the problems. So there's a clash. Mm -hmm between the two so um, basically uh, what they're doing in the companies is to uh, how to get along and how to compromise these values uh, in order for and uh, to have a better working so environment this is where you come in yes <laughs> yes just very briefly do tell us what you do um, as consultant to particular companies Yes, um, right now I'm a consultant. I'm one of the Filipino psychologists, a consultant for Mental Health Support Solutions. And Mental Health Support Solutions is a company that focuses on maritime psychology. So we take care of the mental health of our seafarers as well as the, uh, the land-based employees that deal with the seafarers' concern because uh, definitely the, the nature of their work is different from us who are working on shore. So it's a different um, type of stress that they uh, encounter and of course the the usual stressors that they have to uh, contend with as well. Can you define first mental health just to uh, make the context more clear to our viewers? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, contrary to the idea that when we talk about mental health, it's all about illnesses, it's all about stress, it's all about anxiety and depression. Uh, when we discuss mental health, actually, it's um, how your state of mind and how well you are coping with the day-to-day -day stressors and how are you doing your expected functions in life. 
at work and also how are you contributing as a member of the community despite of this uh, all stressors and all these expectations uh, that are given to you as a person so that's generally what mental health is if you're doing these things well despite of uh, the daily stressors that you have in life and also your personal problems then we could say that you are in a good uh, mental health. So in your experience, how do Filipinos generally view mental health concerns? Okay, so uh, it differs uh, from generation. So again, the older generation tend to view it as something um, uh, lacking more in personal values, like in terms of faith, in terms of their perseverance, those things. But the, the younger generation, they acknowledge the fact that um, mental health problems do exist and if you ignore it, it can become something worse. So that's why um, you need to pay attention to it immediately or you need to uh, give um, first aid. So just like uh, a wound, you need to give first aid to it. So it would not worsen. So of course, um, what do you see as the biggest challenges when it comes to uh, having, when it comes to Filipinos seeking mental health, I know um, Philippine, it's mental is somewhat new, yeah. to a new concept, not necessarily a new concept, but a novel concept that we only knew very recently. So, yes. what are the main challenges? Uh, when Filipinos seek mental health uh, in, in overall terms, uh, also based on your experience? Yes, uh, so it's quite difficult to convince them to seek mental health support, um, especially since um, the younger generation are still dependent on their parents who belong to the older generation so definitely they would say oh um it's uh, you you don't need uh, to see a counselor you just need so and so and so and so so since this um these people are the ones who are going to support them to uh, seek mental health support so basically they are being um uh stopped or they are being uh, uh, held back because of this belief. So that's one of the challenges yeah. that. Oh, uh, in they other have. words, it's um, the parents, siguro, yes. are not informed. You know, yes. there needs to be, um, a, you know, education yes. in terms of yes. mental health support. Yes. Yes. So, but it's so interesting um, that you there were certain words, certain phrases that you used earlier that I just want to go back to um, in relation to what Red has been asking. But uh, first of all, I suppose. What we can ask you is, what are the red flags? Let's say I'm a parent, I'm not very knowledgeable, uh, you know, in, in terms of if, you know, my children's mental health, you know, is, is somewhat um, uh, in danger. I don't know yes, how yes. you call it. What are the red flags? And then later on, I'll come back to what you said that it, you need to give first aid. That's very yeah. interesting. Yes. How do you give first aid to, uh, to something like that? You can't put a band-aid yes, on. Yes. So red flags first. Uh, red flags when it comes to uh, mental health problems, it's um, you have to see the the pattern of behavior in terms of how are they spe uh, sleeping, mm -hmm. are they sleeping a lot, mm -hmm. are they sleeping less, so those things. In terms of the appetite as well, you have to look uh, or you have to observe are they eating more or are they eating less because sometimes these are already signs, signs that yeah. there is something going on and then in terms of the things that they do or the things that they usually find um, interesting or pleasurable before you would notice them suddenly um, abandoning these hobbies or this interest. Mm -hmm. So they're not doing it anymore. And when you ask them, what's happening? Why, are you, why aren't you doing this and this and this? They would just say, oh, nothing much. Yeah. I, because so I just don't There are really it. obvious changes. Yes. In the way. So it's not just like a one-off. Yes. Because I'll just tell you, my son, I just think he's a smart aleck. Because one time I was telling him off, he did something wrong. Yeah. And then... So the next thing I knew, he was already on his computer and playing games. So I was yeah. like, I just, you know, you just did something wrong. I don't think you deserve to be playing on a computer. And then he said to me, he goes, but it's how I cope. Oh, yeah. So I said, wow, my son kind of knows. 
<laughs> what to tell me. But yeah, that yeah. only happened once. Yeah. He eats well and he yeah, eats yeah. well. So I think he was just being, yeah. you know, you have to spot those things. Um, because people have started to use mental health as an excuse for many Definitely. things. And that's Definitely. what we have to be careful with. So th those are red flags because parents should know if, if their children aren't sleeping enough or, yeah. or not eating as much or generally you know has changed their yeah. behavior they and it happens over a certain period of yes, time yes it's not just it's not one. just a one-off yes so how do you give first aid to that ah yes that's a good question uh, we have what we call psychological first aid and usually psychological first aid are the ones that we do uh, when the person is exposed to very stressful events or traumatic incidents mm -hmm. like for example uh, the Yolanda uh, yes, typhoon yes. so uh, what the group of psychologists did is to um, give out. psychological mm -hmm. first aid because um, it is a very traumatic um, experience for the people who were um, displaced because of that typhoon. At home, um, it's not so much as that traumatic, but then when you already spot that the person has stressors, you can already uh, give them the or uh, offer them support like oh, you seem to be down or you seem to have a problem these days do you want to talk about mm -hmm. it or do you want me to keep you company mm -hmm. so just saying these things are already giving first aid to the person mm -hmm. who might be needing help it's not necessary that we always have to talk about things because there are some people who um, tend to warm up very slowly yes. so it might take them time before mm -hmm. they open up about their problems so mm -hmm. Simple things like that, just listening and just being there for them. The, your presence is enough uh, for them to feel that they are supported and that there's someone who's willing to help them uh, through what they are going. Yeah. Is it a good idea? I mean, especially if it's, it's let's say it's a father and a son. Yeah. And, um, you know, maybe let's say um, your son comes to you and says, I, I kind of have this problem in school. Yeah. There's, you know, I mean, bullying, that's an issue. That's like one of the things that, that would really be a problem yeah, um, yeah. For, for, for children. But um, fathers tend to always t tell their sons, toughen up, yes. you know, uh, deal with it. Yeah, yeah. Are these words that we should be telling our children today? Um, it's quite difficult uh, because we also want uh, the children to have this uh to to have this uh, gumption yes. right that we want them to deal with this uh, problems on their own so it's for me it's pretty much um i'm in the middle because mm -hmm. i was raised that way yes so you have to deal yeah. with it and yeah. i f i feel like i'm okay mm -hmm. <laughs> in terms of my mental health however we have to acknowledge the fact that the generation today is different from ours that they need to be um, talked to um, and w you need to open this type of discussion uh, by giving them the, the values that you think that they should have mm -hmm. and letting them decide what they should uh, do given that situation. Mm -hmm. It's not that we're going to take away their um, autonomy from them by dealing with the problem ourselves, but it's more on giving them the choice that um, what do you think you should do if this this happens to you or okay. this is okay. happening to you? So what do you think would be a better option? How, how young can a person um, start having mental health issues? Oh, there are cases as young as four years old. Really? Wow. Yes, yes. In U.S., they have those cases. Uh, there are four years old who are already suffering from depression or there are there were even uh, worse cases that I have read about uh, were in there are children suffering from schizophrenia oh my goodness yes. uh, as young as that age um, here in the Philippines I'm not sure if it's because we lack the statistics the accurate statistics because of uh, uh, let's be honest we don't have really a good uh, mental health uh, care here in the country mm -hmm. yet so that's why we don't have the, the accurate numbers mm -hmm. yet to um, 
to see yes. what's happening in terms of the mental health of children. And also the sad part is maybe the, those who uh, probably are suffering from mental health are probably those who cannot really afford yes, to seek you know, help from professionals like, like yourself. So there's it's really a huge topic. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you know, I mean, when you talk about this, you have to talk about social media. You, yeah. you have to talk about, you know, family life. Yeah, and all these things, you yeah, know, what, what, and, and even politics. You have to talk about politics because politics. that's a big, yeah. that's a big uh, factor that affects how programs for mental health that's will be true. implemented. Yes, that's true. So we have actually a law about yes. the mental health. So how can the Mental Health Act, the Republic Act 11036, be better implemented to improve access to care? Uh, that's a good question. Um, actually, uh, one of the things that are written in that particular uh, Republic Act is that there should be a mental health program in all uh, sectors. Yeah. Um, but unfortunately, we're quite slow to uh, abide to that particular regulation. Um, the the only or one of the sectors that I found uh, who who immediately um, complied or um, yeah did what uh, what's being regulated here is the maritime industry mm -hmm. um, since they are or the shipping company is owned by uh, <coughs> foreigners or people mostly Europeans I work with uh, them uh, since they are also big on mental health they immediately implemented this thing so so this is why the seafarers uh, aside from their technical training they also get uh, mental health uh, awareness training. They also get uh, psychological first aid training, so they would know what to do um, when they are on board. Before going to sea. Before, yeah. So that's a big change, I suppose, yeah, yeah. In, in how they're sent, you know. Yeah. Sent. So, so that when when they are stressed out, they would they know, know what what they can do with that stress. And then, of course, when uh, when all things fail, then that's the time that they can uh, seek help from us. So they know that we are in place. Uh, they know that we are there to help them out, even though they are uh, on the sea. Mm -hmm. Yes. So these are. Oh. Of course, you know, our OFWs at sea. Uh, yeah. What's the most common problem missing their families? That is that, um, I mean, first of all, that I suppose that's what their, their um, big thing is, or not really? Is not it being really. trapped? Trapped at not, sea? Not what really. Is it? <laughs> not really. Um, actually, that was quite surprising. I was also expecting that uh, most of them. Uh, would be having problems about uh, homesickness, yes, but uh, since I've been with uh, MHSS for four years so far, uh, I only encountered like um, one or two um, concerns mm, okay. like that. Uh, most of their concerns are more on a work-related stress, mm. like uh, because they have long hours. Mm. Mm. They have long hours and um, sometimes bullying, unfortunately. Oh, yeah. There. Yeah. Uh, because of course difference in uh, nationality yeah. and um, of course we also have the the ranking system mm -hmm. so since they are right. yeah since they have hierarchy so sometimes there are really those um, officers that tends to go over the line when it comes mm -hmm. to um, their power so mm -hmm. those are some of the concerns that I have encountered. But I think what, what is good to know with what you've said to us because the owners of these um, huge uh, companies yeah. are foreign and quite a lot of their employees are Filipinos. Yeah. There is that concern yeah, from yeah. the top most, yeah. um, you know, top most yeah, level. Yeah. So I'm glad that these things are being addressed, yeah, you know, yeah. because mm -hmm. um, I suppose in the past they just really had to deal with it. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Um, some some of my clients have told me that um, uh, sometimes they just uh, they just toughen it up yeah. because they they cannot um, go against mm -hmm. the, that officer, else mm -hmm. they might uh, lose their job. So they have these um, stressors on top of this uh, bullying uh, that they are experiencing. So they have this. Um, other concerns that make it difficult for them and to, and slowly but surely the the higher ups i mean the bosses maybe are also 
being trained obviously to yes definitely. so it's it's yeah. um the effort is is yes you know, um high we, level we do uh, training mental health training to the officers so that uh, since they handle the people on board so they can already spot the mm. the seafarer who is already going through something mm. uh in terms of their mental health um and then of course we are may, um we have the uh, ratings um to attend the mental health awareness so so that they also have this awareness of um what's wrong with them when they see or when they spot this uh, symptoms that we explain to them or even with uh, helping out their fellow crew members, how they can help out when they see uh, this crew member um, showing these signs or symptoms. Mm -hmm. so. so, do you find that um, you know our uh, mga kababayan at sea yes. um, are they willing to actually acknowledge that they're going through something? and uh are they willing to seek help because sometimes especially i'm sure most a lot of these are men mm -hmm. and men men don't usually uh, you yeah, know yeah. want to admit that that they're going through something um you know mentally but are, is it changing i hope is it yes um uh the i think the what you're mentioning is the macho culture yes, that we have yes yes. yes yes the macho culture. yes red would know that huh? <laughs> <laughs> macho yes yes mm -hmm. um Surprisingly, uh, they are being more open about uh, seeking mental health support. Um, it, it's just really letting them know that help is available whenever you need it and the right help that uh, you would need. Because before, one of the things that they don't uh, or that hinders them from seeking help is because of the language. Although we speak English, English uh, sometimes they cannot really express everything that mm -hmm. well to the psychologist mm -hmm. that the company hired because the psychologist is um, English speaking and of course the, the psychologists don't understand the culture uh, where they're coming from mm -hmm. the, the perspective so now that uh, we have this sort of help wherein the help understands your language uh, understand the perspective of where you're of where you're coming from then it's easier for them to open up to us mm -hmm. so and we're getting more and more yes. calls from them uh, it's really easy for them to open up because uh, one of the things that they struggle with is uh, sharing it with their fellow seafarers mm -hmm. because sometimes mm -hmm. they feel that they cannot do it especially if the topic is very yes. uh, personal yes. for them. I suppose if there might be people watching us who have their small businesses maybe yeah. in offices and things like that. I mean, even here at the Times, it, we just can't mm. show you, but our president, um, uh, Dante Ang, uh, the second has been very concerned about m mental health in the newsroom. Yeah. I mean, you know, the stress of deadlines and uh. Uh, we have our bamboo wall. <laughs> <laughs> there was a time he, we we'd also when we were um, before the pandemic, we'd always be here. Um, he'd have some scents actually uh in the room to sort oh, yeah, of maybe yeah. relax us but you know and then we watch movies we see you know what i really love is to have like uh somebody yung ma'am <laughs> ma i mean what are the simplest things that business owners office you know people office managers can do to help uh out in you know the, the state of mental health of their employees in the work room. yeah in the yeah, work room. Yeah. um it depends on the workplace, so I cannot really have this general yeah. idea. But basing from our, my experience, uh, one of the things that help us deal well with uh, stress in the work was our uh, no, um, copy hand. We have this uh, weekly mm -hmm. copy hand uh, in the university where I used to mm -hmm. work uh, within our department, and then we just we just drink coffee and talk mm. about things so it's our way of distressing yes. unloading mm. so we're we're sharing uh the the problems together so because we always have this uh, saying in psychology uh, a problem shared is a problem half solved so it's even though we're not really resolving the problem the the physical problem or the tangible problem uh we felt better after yes. that happy hand session yeah
Mm. Bia, have you got yeah, any more question. in your list to ask Miss Karen? Um, do you think, ma'am, there are enough qualified mental health professionals in the country, especially in rural areas? Or yeah. when can one seek uh, mental health? Mental health, health, health. Uh, and consultation. I'd like, and I'd like to buttress Bia's question because um, the government is pushing so hard on mental. It's one of the main agendas of uh, Secretary Tedebosa. Yes. But it seems that now no Filipinos are not familiar mm. with the services being yeah, given yeah. by the government. So can you share us what are the services that the government, the services government and private sector partners mm -hmm. like you? Mm -hmm. offer for Filipinos who are seeking mental health and of course um they always they always think that mental health is always is uh, has a very bad stig stigma yeah so um can you shed light on uh on how you help uh, Filipinos to consult on to have them consult on mental health issues okay uh, so first um, first things first uh, in terms of having professionals mm. of course we do have professionals uh, in the field but unfortunately um, hindi lahat ng pumapasa ay nagpa-practice mm. sa field so that's the problem and this is because uh, I think of course the, the pay as well okay. um, and then the ratio mm. of the people seeking help to own a practitioner. So actually, um, when I look up the statistics here in the Philippines, there is uh, still one one mental health practitioner to one thousand wow. patients. So that's that's a very big number. Um, and unfortunately, uh, oh, parang every licensure i think uh, there are about 200 who pass the licensure mm -hmm. exam um but not all practice this, this mental psychology yeah, yeah yeah so that's why the ones in the practice uh get bombarded with a lot of patients yeah. yes yeah. um and then of course we cannot cater to everyone mm -hmm. and uh, of course not all patients can also uh afford our mm -hmm. fees so that's that's where the problem comes in and when we do direct them to government uh, funded programs such as the helpline for uh, national uh, center yeah, for yeah. mental health uh, national center for mental health has a helpline uh, philippine mental health association yeah. also has a helpline so to speak um, but then again uh, it can only cater to a certain number of clients because of the lack of manpower and uh, fundings for that one so that's that's where the problem lies so uh, on on the part of the private uh, sector um, or our company in particular what we do is we offer mental health services yeah. not only to the seafarers and not only to the land-based employee but also to their um, uh, nuclear family oh, oh, yes oh, that's good yeah. yes yeah. because um, somehow it helps to ease the the burden or the number of um uh people who would need mental health mm -hmm. uh health uh, uh mental health help so that's why uh that's what we also offer in terms of our services ma'am you shared you said that you offer your services to the immediate family members yeah. the nuclear families what normally are the problems issues, or mental yeah. health issues that they that the family members of your clients face yeah. in general terms uh for the family members of course the the stressors mm -hmm. uh here um uh in their surroundings so, so i i had one client in particular uh who's the a child of, of the seafarer um and she reported about being stressed academically mm -hmm. so that's that's what the stressor is um and then she wants to do well in school um uh, despite that the the father the one the, the seafarer is not really demanding any high honors mm -hmm. from her it's just that you just study well um, for as long as you pass your uh, subjects I'm okay with it well, we're not pushing you to become an honor student so on and so forth but the, the student or the the child really wants to get that um, that 
uh, that honor from her school. Mm -hmm. So that's what's stressing her out. Based on your experiences, I mean, you've been doing this practice for nearly 15 years already, and of course, uh, teaching psychology as well. Uh, what do you think are the main mental health issues that Filipinos normally face? One of the reasons why um, most <laughs> of the statistics show um, the prevalence of mental health uh, issues is in the younger uh, bracket. It's because of the fact that the younger generations are more open. Mm. Yeah, to social, and there's social yes. media. They actually yeah. Yeah, you know, they, say it out. They you know, self, sometimes say, they self-diagnose. Yeah. Mm. So that's that's one of the problems oh, also. Okay, so yeah. they self-diagnose without um, asking for proper help without being assessed properly by the professionals. So sometimes they would say, um, oh, I have this, oh, I have this. Um, even in, in when I was teaching, one of my students mentioned, oh, I'm neurodivergent. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I asked her, do you know, do what, you know, what, what, do you know what that means? Yeah. Do you know what it means? Oh, no, ma'am, uh, I just noticed that I also have the, the same uh, characteristics as this person that I saw on TikTok, mm. and blah, blah, blah. Then I told my student, no, you have to be assessed and diagnosed for you to claim that, before you claim that. And being neurodivergent is something that should be a, a badge of mm. honor. It's something that some people really suffer from. Before I go into B first, because I, I noticed self-diagnosis. Yeah. It, in, in social media, it's prevalent. How can we prevent uh, people going into social media or even in search engines telling themselves that, uh, I'm neurodivergent, I might have bipolar disorder. Right. Yeah, How can so we difficult. prevent mm -hmm. these kinds of self-diagnosis? Uh, um, there are, uh, in relation to that, there are professionals, mental health professionals, who are um, doing their own uh, uh, information campaign to, to somehow um, address this misinformation on the social media so what they do is to clarify so they um, what they i don't i'm not using uh, tiktok so i'm not really uh so uh, they stitch they stitch mm -hmm. the video from the 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 one that's spreading misinformation and they correct the information mm. with their details so that's one of the things that they do and um on my side i always tell my students to to follow this more credible people yeah. because they are the ones in practice they are the ones mm. who have studied it for years mm -hmm. and uh, they have the credibility yes. to to talk I about this more and more in schools i mean i noticed for my sons uh, they really do have this big sort of uh, they give a lot of time and you know for lessons about credible sources yes, and yes. you know um, and things like that. So I think slowly but surely yes. everybody's trying to come together to get there. But Via, uh, I, I know you've got quite a few more questions <laughs> yes. um, um, in your list. Uh, if we could give them to Miss yes, Karen. Um, since nabanggit din po kanina na self diagnosis, do you think po may uh, factor or impact yung stigma, cost, and access kaya hindi sila nagsisik ng uh, uh, sa professionals po. Like, uh, kunyari po, walang pera or yeah, yeah, walang yeah. access sa lugar or yeah. baka ma-judge ng ibang tao. Ganun. Yeah. Uh, definitely, there is this uh, fear of being judged, uh, fear of being um, uh, judge like oh you're using mental health as excuse mm -hmm. to avoid responsibility yeah. so that's where the judgment is right now that's where the stigma is right now um, and then in terms of access really the access is a very difficult uh, especially for those who are living in the rural areas uh, because um, the practitioners uh, here in the Philippines are mostly concentrated here in Metro Manila yeah. so that's one of the problem Another thing is that although we do have telepsychology 
uh, offering um, consultation and uh, counseling uh, via video calls and uh, of course bo audio calls. Uh, the problem is the connection, the yeah. internet connection. So uh, that's one of the things that I found frustrating during the pandemic because uh, we didn't really have uh, any other way to do practice but through online or through telepsychology. So um, yeah, that, that's why it, it's really a web of, uh, of uh, things. Problems. Yeah, yeah. And Yes, that's it's true. So, yeah, to improve mm -hmm. uh, to improve mental health practice here in the Philippines, we really need to address other factors first. Um, because as I've said earlier, there are, uh, of course, the, the cultural values that are imbued to us from generation to generation. And then there are the, the access, the infrastructures that are hindering us from accessing uh, mental health support. And then, of course, politics, uh, the, what are the regulations in place? How are these being implemented? So those are some of really uh, top of, of my mind uh, that's hindering the full implementation of mental health support here in the country. Mm -hmm. So what role can families and communities play in supporting mental health? Yes, uh, that's also a good question. Um, for families, it's really good that they start talking about things inside home uh, because most of the time what we're seeing is uh, those who are easily stressed or those who are prone to developmental health condition, they don't really have um, a good communication or a good uh, family support at home. So that's why they tend to... Um, be more prone to this problem and then in terms of the community the community has to um, give support in terms of the other needs of the uh, person uh, like for example having parks having playgrounds for children to play uh, because this is what we're lacking right mm -hmm. now uh, one of the reasons why a uh, children has a poor mental health because they are not playing outside anymore mm -hmm. and when you ask them it's because there's n no place to play, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There, right? So there's no playground, there's no basketball area. So there's no place for them to play with their playmates, mm. play tag, yeah. do these things that are uh, crucial to the psychological uh, development of a child. Mm -hmm. So these are some of the, the things, things that the community should uh, address. Yeah, as well. I, think, I think that's a really great place to wrap up our interview because you know as you said there are you know the, a web of problems concerning yes. access and you know um people trying to be able to afford it yes. or, or be you know even in the beginning acknowledging that they have all these things but as long as it starts with the family that's your message miss karen yes. i know it really has to start with the family um if you have any last words to actually um Impart give you know, some universe. advice to give uh, those watching us right now. Um, what can they do apart from being open in their families? Uh, maybe take their cue from their children. Yes. <laughs> um, um, having good mental uh, health is a collective effort. Mm -hmm. So it's mm -hmm. not just coming from the person themselves. It's also coming from the support system of the person. So it's uh, from the person so internally, uh, the person's family, and the person's community. So if uh, everything will um, combine their uh, efforts to build a good uh, system for the person, then it's definitely going to lessen the mental health problems that we are encountering yes. at present. Please continue the good work that you do. And um, I'd like to thank, of course, uh, Red and Via for joining us today. We really did cover so much. Uh, I think, you know, I, our readers will have a lot of things to take away and probably think about whether they're running offices and, and you know basically within their families so i hope you all uh, enjoyed and learned from this episode of the manila times newsroom um this is Tessa Mauricio ariola again thank you very much uh, miss karen ibanez uh, good morning to you all